You want me to start? Hello, welcome everybody to our Thursday morning virtual uh, coffee break. We've got a few of our our uh, outstanding members of the Summit Seekers group with us this morning. And so we are going to have a great discussion. I'm glad you're here and we look forward to um, having you watch. If you watch us on the replay, give us a hashtag replay and let us know what you thought. All right, everybody, let's introduce you. Start, stop, start with you, Mr. Timothy. I'm Timothy McLendon. I live in South Louisiana, about an hour north, northwest of New Orleans. I remote work for the National Science Foundation, which I will hit 25 years in May with. Yes. I have been remote working, thankfully, from here for over a year. And my, my side hustle is with Young Living Essential Oils, but I also plan to do some mindset coaching. Very good. All right, Miss Deb. Hi, I'm Deb. I am from uh, Eagle Lake, Minnesota, which is in the south central part of Minnesota. And I have been an Avon rep for 20 or 12 years and going strong. I'm loving what I do. Awesome. Very good. All right. Well, does anybody, I know I asked Tim a little bit earlier if there was anything that he wanted to talk about and he didn't. Miss Deb, was there anything that you had on your mind that you might want to discuss this morning? Uh, not really. I guess scheduling post in advance. How to keep yourself doing that so that you're not sitting on the computer all day doing it. Well, on your personal profile, there is no in advance unless you use another service. Okay. So post planner, there, there's like three or four of them that you can sign up with and that they will post, they will do your posts. You can schedule them. Okay. The problem with that is that Facebook knows that that's what, who you're using <laughs> when you do it. Oh, okay. Okay. And they're not real crazy about it. So the biggest thing you can do to help yourself about planning your posts is to is to plan them in advance on paper or in Trello or, you know, in a place where you can save each of the posts and say, this is Monday. Re remember when we did the, the thing on Trello, I had yes. that, that post Trello board. Okay. And with having that, that is exactly what that's for. Planning your Facebook Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now in your groups, you can schedule that. There is a schedule. You can click on when you go to do the post, there is a place to, that it will, it will pop up or that you can see where you can schedule it. So okay. you can Under so advanced when, settings. Right. It's in, it is in the groups that you can do that. And on your page, I think you can do that. <laughs> but your personal profile oh. is your personal profile yeah. each and every day. So okay. the easiest thing to do is... <laughs> Find a time of day that you can work it on a regular on a regular basis, or you know, stick it in when you can. But if you know where it is, that, that's why I liked Trello for keeping my notes in this. Because no matter what device I used, I could always pull up my Trello. Mm -hmm. And however you decide to, whether you use a, a formal one that's already laid out, or you just Create a, a, a Trello board and say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be where you can keep the post and that you can access it on a quicker basis. Okay, on so Instagram. by scheduling when I'm on vacation, then it'll just automatically post on those, correct? On, on your... Like on my pages? On on the on your group and your I I think it's your I haven't been on my business page in a long time okay. and I I I think you can schedule those <clears throat> because on, Facebook honors that it's it, it's a business. On okay. Instagram, if you have a business account, you can go under advanced settings and create. Um, you can schedule your times. You, okay, your, on Instagram. Your, um, on Instagram. Yes, on Instagram. Right. Okay. I, I I wasn't thinking any other platform yeah. except Facebook because Facebook's the one I majorly 
post on. Now I do have my Instagram set up where it on posts that you can do both on mm -hmm. take my Facebook post and put it in my Instagram. Yeah. Right. I got that. Because a lot of times I just don't think of them. Instagram is not a strong point. And my training in all of the different mentors is conquer one platform and then add another. Okay. And Facebook is more used for talking to people. And so getting people to know who you are, who you are, to know, like, and trust you is been what I have focused on with my profile for the last two and a half, three years. Okay. And that's, that's what makes using the organic, it's called an organic marketing system, which is what I teach and what I help people move forward in because then you're using Facebook where Facebook wants to be used. You're not going against the algorithm when you're trying, when you're using it that way and you can get more traction. Okay. Um, right now, Facebook is promoting reels. So having reels and a post helps it go out to more people, you know, um, I've tried to, in, in on my other different talks, we've talked about posting before or not posting, engaging on people's posts and stuff before you post, mm -hmm. proving that you're being social to the algorithm before you post anything it is an important aspect to the, the algorithm being more generous. Oh, I didn't know that. Didn't know that either. Okay. Well, different things, you know, I, I, I'm, I, t I talk in different areas. And so I forget what I've shared and what I haven't shared, but that's, that is one of the things about, and, and I think we, I said it in before when we talked about this, the Facebook train, you know, when we've talked about Facebook before on here, being social, Facebook wants you to be social. You have to be social. You should be social before you put something on there. This is why the chat. No, we were talking about the um, the algorithm chat. Remember when we were talking about the chat? I told you if I'm going to have to, if I'm going to spend 30 minutes engaging on people's posts before I post, I'd rather it be yours, 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 and yours. Give me your posts. Put them. Put the posts in the chat, and that way we can be. I, I'm going to be engaging on people's posts. Let it be yours. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. That And the thing is, is the more engagement you get on a post, the more the algorithm says, oh, this is important. People want to see it. Oh, wow. It's important. Let's send it out to a few more. But I am going to tell you, you will never get more than 15, 20% of your friends list that it's going to go out to unless you majorly, majorly become an influencer. You have to have the 5,000 friends because the thing is, is, if you only have a thousand and it goes out to one or 2%, that's 10 or 20 people. If those 10 or 20 people don't get excited about your post, then it's not going to go anywhere. Your messenger and talking to your friends have, have, I mean, I, with, with the tool that I use, I, I do birthdays. I do birthdays. It, it, Facebook tells me who my birthdays are today, yesterday, the day before, and for the next almost 10 months, I can, I can do birthdays. Wishing somebody a birth, happy birthday before their birthday gets more attention than wishing it on their day of their, I have to, last year I had to turn my phone off. Wow. Because I have 5,000 friends or almost 5,000 friends. So last year when it was my birthday, which is coming up again, I'm going to get inundated with them on my, well, they can't see. And the thing is, I can't post it on my, my newsfeed. I have my settings so that nobody, nobody can use my newsfeed, but me. Okay. There's ways to set up your Facebook so that only you 
are, you know, nobody can, 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 can do anything else. So birthday, on my birthday, my messenger blows up, <laughs> just freaking blows up. <laughs> Oh, it was so many. I couldn't, I couldn't even get to them all to, to thank people. I just finally did a, a blanket. Thank you everybody <laughs> for all the birthday. Cause it was just, um, it gets really a lot. So now I went from doing birthday wishes a day or two ahead to now I do them on Sundays. And so on Sunday, I'll sit down for two hours maybe two and a half, depends on how many I have for the week. Because when you have 5,000 friends, there are a good 40 to 50 birthdays to do <laughs> for the week. <laughs> and you have to change the message a little because you cannot do the same message over and over and over in Messenger. If you do the same message over and over and over and over in Messenger, it will put you in jail. Okay. Okay. So for me to do 50 or 60 happy birthdays, I have to <coughs> tweak each one. So I put their names in it. I, I, I change it up and rotate them in the 50 or 60 that I do. Now, when on Sunday, I send the, the ones out for Monday and say, happy birthday, your birthday is tomorrow. Then for the rest of them, I say, oh, your birthday is next week. So I do the whole week because then, because I get busy and I don't want to miss it. But when those people, you, you get back, the ones who's going to talk to you will talk to you and say, thank you so much. I appreciate your birthday. It's so sweet. It opens up a way for you to have a conversation with that person. Because the thing is, is having the conversations is how you get to know people. You're not going to sell them in your newsfeed. You might be able to put a curiosity post out there occasionally and get a couple of hands or get somebody to message. But your, your way you're going to connect with people is a messenger. And so what better way than to wish them a happy birthday? Then I use a tool. After I do my birthdays and I find out who, who will talk back to me, I have a tool that then starts doing drip drip messages. You know, oh, I hope you're having a great day. You, if it, nobody told you today, you're amazing. I'll do that. Then how did y'all get to my group? Didn't y'all get a message? Say, hey, I have this group. Do you remember that message? Mm -hmm. Okay. My tool sent you that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then I'll do in the drip and I, and I try to space them four, three or four or five days apart. Sometimes it ends up being a week or so because sometimes life gets busy because I have to run it. I have to set it, you know, I have to choose it to run every every day when I when I run it. But then I'll do another message after the group. You, you got another message that said, hey, if nobody told you today, you're wonderful. I sent you another message, right? And then four or five days later, I might... I, I'm going to hit you up with another message that says, hey, this might be out of left field, but have you ever heard of the online wellness store? Anybody get that message from me? Don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. But what I'm saying is my opportunity, because even though I, I'm coaching, whenever you are in an opportunity, whether it's Avon, Young Living, the travel, it, it, all of them want you to enroll people, right? Mm -hmm. So when you enroll people, then you start coaching them, don't you? Yeah. So I have been in network marketing for 40 some, almost 50 years. So I've been coaching and encouraging and getting people on board with stuff for decades. I just decided that my opportunity is in health and wellness. I love my health and wellness company. Whoops, Timothy had to go. Um, and it is my residual income. But in between me finding the people that want to be healthy, I can help you 
and help coach people who want to build their businesses. Because building a business is the same. It doesn't matter what company it is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. My desire is to help women build the, the income that they need and want and the lifestyle and the, the confidence that they want. It, that is my desire for women to have. If it had not been for my business, I couldn't have. I couldn't have freed myself from a very, I won't say bad marriage, but a very, very disempowering mess, marriage where I was the doormat. If anything went wrong, it was my fault. If it hadn't been for me having the business and a way not to have to work nine to five, that I was stuck with a fixed income. Anybody understand that when you work and you give time for money that you're on a fixed income. We think seniors are only on a fixed income. That's not true. Everybody is on a fixed income when you trade an hour for money. So whether I, I trade it in doing a job that I get paid $15 an hour, what they just, they just raised um, what minimum wage, right? So how many hours a day can you work? Physically, you can only work 10, 12, 14. So you're trading those 14 hours for $15 an hour. That's a fixed income, guys. So having an, a business, women women want when they're when they're taking care of kids or when they're st stuck in a job and they're not feeling really empowered having your own business gives you a a way to talk to people who love what you have hmm. my avon business saved my sanity so many times because <laughs> they were the one pe people would call me they put in their orders and they call me say is my avon in yet they wanted me <laughs> they couldn't wait for me to bring them their stuff my my Avon customers saved my soul. I, I can't even tell you. I have a I had a special needs daughter. I had a husband who wanted the food on the table when he got home. And I was everybody's slave. How empower how, how do you survive that? You have your own business where people can't wait to see you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now I want to help other women have the choices. Now, not, I'm going to say something very general and, and I don't want anybody to take it like I'm saying anything. The divorce rate is what? Over 60 or 70%. So that wow. means that 60 or 70% of women are going to be living below the poverty level because women on a fixed income, I don't care how many jobs you have. It's really hard to be a single woman with children in this day and age. Anybody agree, disagree, what you think? Yep. Okay. So having your own business gives you the freedom of finding people who want what you have and making an extra income, but you can control how many hours and how you do that. You can build it over time. So I want to help. This is what my desire at 65 years old is to help women get that freedom. Because I had it. I worked at it. Nobody, nobody held me by the hand and told me how to do it. I stumbled. I fell. <laughs> I think I broke my nose a couple times. <laughs> the journey's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. But it's not easy. But it is so worth it when you have people and a community that can encourage you, that you can come to and say, hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, can somebody just say I lo love me? <laughs> you know, uh, I need a hug. Because some days, you know, even 
even in my Avon business, some days were hard. Some days the car broke down. I couldn't go to do deliveries. Some days it snowed and the whole city shut down and I had a whole day of deliveries all planned. I'm like, oh, okay, how do I survive that? But having your own business gives you the freedom as you build it over years, how, depending on how much time and energy and community. Because when I was in Avon, we still had, Deb, it was so old back when they still had sales meetings. When we <laughs> still had district managers. <laughs> okay. That was a while ago. Okay. And I had a district manager that I could get help from anytime. She adored me. But I quit going to sales meetings because when you are the number one seller for a decade, everybody hates you when you walk in or you go to President's Club luncheon because then why can't I get a fight? Why does she have to win everything? Why? I worked it. I had a special needs daughter. I couldn't go to work. I had to make an income. I, I, I needed... I had my why. My why was stronger than your why. And that is the biggest reason that people either succeed or don't succeed in their business is what is your why? If you're only chasing the money, then it's it's a shallow thing. But if your why, my why was to keep insurance, health insurance on my daughter. Because if she lost health insurance, she could not get insured and she would be at the mm. government's mercy for whatever services she needed. Gives you gives you a lot of motivation. So oh, yeah. I, I had a huge business. I had every reason. I dove in. I said, I right, get her done. <laughs> and that's what I want to help other women discover within themselves, the why that means the most to get her done. Because until you have the why that means the most, it's a hobby. Hello, Miss Tamika, it's good to see you. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? I'm how good. everybody doing? I finally got here. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Um, we, we, I guess we started talking about Facebook and posts and then it's just kind of morphed <sighs> and I I've gotten on my, I guess on my platform here. And anyway, what else would y'all like to discuss? Cause you know, <laughs> the, the why is, is important in your business. The why brings out the determination to get her done, even on the bad days. And the, the, the whys change every year. In 45 years, I don't have, anybody have the same why today that they may have had five years ago? No, ma'am. Nope. Okay, I don't have the same why. My daughter's 40 now. <laughs> She's 40. She lives on her own. She drives. I did it. Yay! I have my mother who's 90. I want to ha help her have the best end of year years that she can enjoy so switched gears switched what i'm doing so that whatever that journey looks like for my mother i have a computer i have the internet i can still make money i can still be a productive human being in something that i love which is helping and i can still be here for her karen can you hear me Yes. Who's this? Oh, yes. Mar I can't Maria. see you, but I hear you. <laughs> I I can't get the, I, it took me five minutes to get on every week. I have this issue, but I don't know how to bring up the, uh, the picture of me. Well, sorry to interrupt, but I need to go. All right. Bye, Tim. We'll see you if you come back. All right. Well, I'm glad you're here, Miss Maria. I've seen your name pop in and out, but I didn't see your picture. So I wasn't sure what that meant. <laughs> I'm not trying to be incognito, really. Uh, it's all right. What, what, what would you like to say? I still can't get there. Okay, so what kind of a... Um, guide or... or um, 
you know, you have a table of contents in the beginning of a book. And I hope I don't lose power here, but um, what sort of step by step can one go to keep one on a track of consistency? That is my hardest, hardest. Life gets so much in the way. It's just, it's the hardest thing for me. Okay. I just, the I just don't know. Okay. The consistency is, is all in developing your modes of operation. And that's part of my coaching program is teaching and us documenting and putting together what it is you need to do to move your, your business forward. For everybody, it's going to be a little different. Everybody's business is a little different. Everybody's time frames are a little different. It's just for so Maria, there there is no cut and dry answer okay. of what you need to do. Working your business every day. What does it take to make money in your business? Like anything else, numbers. Okay, but numbers, but it takes people buying stuff, right? Right. Okay, in order for people to buy stuff, you need to be talking to them, right? Right. Okay, so how can you get in front of one or two, three, four, five? How can you get in front of somebody today? See, that's, well, that's your consistency is, okay, I'm going to talk to one person today. Will it be picking up the phone? Will it be a messenger? Will it be, you know, doing a post that says, Hey, I'm I've got this freebie or I got this something. Anybody want one? But see, I gave I gave away in a giveaway and a love gift. Um well, I didn't say it was always the best thing because if you don't have enough people <laughs> in your friends list, it doesn't go anywhere. Yes. I would think 90 people. You have what? I would think 90 people. You have 90 people. Did you say you have 90 people? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when you do a post and Facebook sends it out to 1%, how many people does it go to? Nine. No. I was trying to plug in before I lost battery. Sorry. If you had 100 um, people, 1% 1 of 100 is one person. One person. Okay. I have so, a person then. So that's what I'm saying. And if that one person that Facebook sends it to doesn't care what you posted, then the algorithm has no way to judge whether others will want to see it or not. Okay. If you want to use Facebook, it, it is about numbers, but it's in adding people because not everybody will ever see your post. Facebook is not showing your post to every one of your friends. Doesn't happen, won't ever happen. You can tag people. You want more people to see it? Tag them. It's, you know, I have mine set up. Don't tag me because it won't go nowhere because I don't, tagging is not, I don't allow tags to show up in my, in my newsfeed. But you can try tagging people. Maria, if you only have 90 people, I tag them. I also have a system that I work with. Um, and I've got a little thing by my desk that says what gets scheduled gets done. Mm -hmm. So on my schedule, I have contact five people today. And what I do now, which I didn't in the past, but I actually list the five people I want to contact. Good job. Say in Messenger or on Facebook, tagging them. Um, and that way I know they're getting the information I want them to get. And then I can start that relationship. I can start having a conversation with them. But by scheduling it in my planner to do that, it makes sure that I get it done each day because I can check it off. Okay. So that might be something, Maria, is make sure that you schedule that you're going to contact somebody every day. I like that, Deb. Thank that's you. A, that's absolutely the, the way to do it. What gets scheduled gets done. That's why I started this virtual chat. 
what day it was on didn't really matter. I just needed to set a day, set a time and let's do her, you know, <laughs> because mm -hmm. what gets scheduled gets done. Awesome, Deb. That is you. that, you know, and that's why consistency looks different for each person, depending on what your mode is. What's your, your business is, what your goals are. And I feel like a ghost. I can't find, I can't do anything. <laughs> it's okay, Maria. Just I, talk I, to us. Just talk to us, girl. Okay. All right. What were you going to say? Uh, well, I was going to say is I usually on Monday, I try to get one thing in my day timer to just accomplish one thing. So I don't, because sometimes I feel so overwhelmed by what, I need to do whether it's house or outside or extracurricular activities or doctor's appointments and so a lot of times you just get bogged down by that and you can't mm -hmm. you can't even get that one thing done well let me ask you this maria we all can make a big to-do list and you can live by your to-do list and then you can be busy just to be busy the biggest thing about a to-do list and to free yourself from the overwhelm in, in it is prioritize it. What is the most important thing on that list for today? Going to the doctor is an important thing. Go to the doctor. Don't worry about what else is on the list. Do the priority first. So you put them in priority. What are the top three things every day that are pro and prioritize them so that when you get those done, you have done the important things that either for your health, for your family, for your business. Okay. You have to, pro it's about, it's not about, I, I just did a training with Peter Sage and he was talking about the to-do list that some people just want to check stuff off. They have a to-do list and they just can't wait to check it off. Oh yeah, I got it done. All right, yay, look at me. <laughs> and they've really not accomplished anything in their business or they haven't accomplished anything towards their goal. They've just checked off their to-do list. He said the key to every day is to prioritize something that gets you closer to your goal. And that's why we have goals in business, we have goals in personal life, and we have goals out there in the future. What, what will get you closer to your goal? And that's what you have to concentrate. That's, that takes out a lot of the little stuff. If it gets done, Maria, it gets done, right? If it doesn't, you've done the important part. Does that make sense? Yes. Because I, I'm not, I won't say that I'm totally a to-do checker offer, but I like knowing I got my stuff done. When I quit posting every day to Facebook or feeling the need to, because I, I, for two years, I posted every day. I had to have it done. I had to do this. I had to do that. I, I was going through the check and I wasn't any closer to my goal than before. The one thing I did grow was that the algorithm understands that I'm putting out pretty much things that people want and I get a little bit more flexibility in how far my posts go. When I freed myself from the amount of engagement I need to have on every post and I started concentrating on my conversations in Messenger and my conversations and my follow-ups, my follow-ups, I used to be a really terrible person in my follow-up. How good are you in your follow-up? You can't see, but it's a thumbs down. So that's, that's what I'm saying. You have to prioritize what, it would be better to not post at all and do a follow-up that might get you a sale, might get you closer to your goal. Last week, I was so overwhelmed by the amount of people that were invited into my group that I, you know, a lot of people didn't even find their messengers because it's, um, they're welcome um, in messenger because, you know, as I go into the, um, 
summit seekers, I have to go into a special area of chat in order to be able to find, but I already know how to get there. It's getting a big issue, but. <laughs> I, I understand. Um, I mean, that's something new that Facebook just, that they just started doing that in Messenger or with the different things. And we're all learning and dealing, you know, growing with that. And Facebook's going to change. I, I lost you. Y'all are froze. Okay. Everything's going to change over time. Nothing yeah. stays we the same. So the thing is, is you still have to, well, it says my internet connection is unstable. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Can't control the internet. All we can do is try to, you know, keep going through. The biggest thing I can tell you is that you work at your goals. You look at your goals every day. You look at where you want to go. You focus on where you're going, not the problem of today. Mm. The problem of today is always going to be here. It's just going to have a different set of clothes on it. What you want to focus on is, okay, this is temporary. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to move on. Text Tony and tell him I'm on a Zoom. I'm sorry. Oh, you were talking. <laughs> no, yeah. My son just called. I just I told my husband to text him. Okay, so you said focus on where you're going and not the current. Right. Because when you dwell on the problem, if you keep dwelling on what's going on wrong today and, and how you're going to get through it, then that is what keeps happening in your day if you tell yourself like i i'm in i'm in this um I, I signed up with another partner in my opportunity to try to qualify for a cruise i hadn't done that in a couple of years because i've been working on the facebook i've been working on stuff and i said okay i am going to work on my opportunity just as much as i'm working on my co my my um my coaching I'm going to try to give myself a vacation because I miss my Avon vacations. I miss, I used to win all kinds of trips. I didn't want a trip in a while. I'm like, okay, it's past time for a trip. So I'm now splitting up my time in making sure that I spend enough time on going back to over the years that I people I've talked to, people that I haven't been able to, I haven't followed through on. And I'm making that commitment, but I'm focused on now. I, I see myself getting on that ship. I see myself going and I'm going to swim with the dolphins. Guys, I've been wanting to swim with the dolphins for a long time. I'm going swimming with the dolphins. Anybody coming with me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You got to start thinking about where you're going. The how you're going to get there is going to start rolling in. The ideas will start rolling in when you focus on where you want to go. And you ask the universe, okay, what do I need to do today that'll get me closer to that? The universe will give you the ideas. I'm not, I can't give you all the ideas. I'm not the universe. <laughs> I'm not the almighty. So I, I put it out there. To, That's good. I put it out there and let them give me the ideas. Bring me the connections. They're going to introduce me. A new person's. Have you ever said, "Oh, you know, I, I, I can't. I don't know why this happened, but I'm so glad I, I that I made that wrong turn. I'm so glad I, I spent that extra hour. Or I did something, and you showed up. Life isn't about how much you can think your way through it. Life is about ask, deciding where you want to go, and putting your foot one little step ahead and asking the universe okay what do i need to do who do i need to talk to who can i serve i'm going on this trip i want to see it see, focus on that not on the problem for today does that make sense to anybody maybe i'm just maybe it's just me no that's very that, good that that's that's where i try to focus because the house will come to it you know, I get people who 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 walk in or or all of a sudden a friend requests somebody and a friend requests somebody and they said, you know, you're exactly who I was looking for. I went to show the I do a tour for the, the company that I'm in 
And I had a girl that had all sorts of problems. It kept cutting out. She, she had the hardest time getting through the tour. But she was so glad because she said, you know, I forgot all about this company. And I'm so glad I can't wait to get involved. Because when the right person comes into your life, you can't say the wrong thing. But to the wrong person, there is nothing freaking right that you can say or do. The key is to keep meeting the people because the right ones are going to tell you. They're going to say, oh, I'm so excited. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, the, the harder you work at it, the harder it's going to be to work at it. When you don't work at it and you focus on where you want to go, the goals you have, but you make sure that you're still doing actions to do to get there. Because you can't you can't just think your way into having everything. You still got to take the steps. You still got to do the actions. You still got to show up because you have to trade your service of some kind for the future. You have to serve. And serving is not serving dinner. Serving is not always washing the floors. Serving is being open with your heart and saying, how can I help you? How can I be there for you? How can I support you? How can I empower you? You know, for some people, you know, bringing them their Avon stuff was, that was serving them. They wanted a new piece of jewelry. They had a new outfit. And so I served them by let, bringing them a piece of jewelry that now coordinated an outfit. Serving is being open to having the universe show you who you need to help that day. Anybody Does anyone have? else um, set up like 15 minutes and on your, like, again, I'm talking my schedule. I put a 15 minute area and the only thing I work on that 15 minutes is whatever I have wrote in there. Mm -hmm. If I don't get nothing else done that day, I spent those 15 minutes getting up that task done. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, the schedule, um, if it's there, I do it and then I can say, yes, I did it. So in Maria's case, she's looking for like step-by-step -step ideas. You know, doing something like that might help her to help, you know, what you're saying. You can get there when you believe it, but you have to take the action. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Jess, okay. thank you. Yep. And we're here to support you. This is what this chat is all about. You know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have this conversation again. You know, it might be in another couple months from now because it's going to come up. The, the question is going to come up in a different way. And we're going to talk at it about it from a different angle because life doesn't have any new problems. The same things that have been going on for decades and centuries, the humans have not changed. How we think about things normally doesn't change how we solve them. And the things that we use today are different. But we all have the same insecurities. We all have the same doubts. We all have the same lies. I, <laughs> I, um, I have a hairdresser. I, I told my hairdresser, this is so funny. I, I, I went to see, I got my hair cut yesterday. And I told my hairdresser, you know, honey, I, I've heard so many lies about you today. I've been hearing so many lies about you. She goes, you have? What kind of lies? I said, they've been really bad. The lies have been terrible. She goes, oh my God, what were they saying? I said, well, you know, after I told you about the wellness company and I, and you were, you, we had a few things and you, you decided not to, and you had to cancel. You told me your, this appointment came up with your, your internet's daughter. gone. I can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay. Your internet's gone, Debbie. Now you're back. Or okay. Karen. I told her, I said, you canceled my first appointment a week, two weeks ago, because you said a game came up with your daughter out of, out of the blue. 
I said, and then last week you canceled my appointment because you said you couldn't stand because of a sciatic nerve. I said, this little person in my head was telling me you didn't want to talk to me anymore. This little person in my head was telling me how I needed to find a new hairdresser because you was just trying to tell me to go get lost. This little person in my head was telling me that I wasn't welcome to be your customer anymore. Ooh. She said, oh, no, no, this really happened. She says, I got somebody in here helping with my school because I can't stand. I said, I know it was tr that it wasn't true. I told you it was lies. Told you it was lies. I said, but it was attacking me. It was trying to convince me all of these lies. Because what it looked like from its point of view, from its previous history, its programming was that I was supposed to just go away. And I fought it. Because you see the lies up here will get you. The lies up here. Wow. What are you telling? The lies. Because we all have that liar up here that tells us we're not good enough or we shouldn't do it. Oh, nobody wants to care. It doesn't matter if we do that. Oh, I don't have to do that. Nobody wants that. Your thoughts are your main culprit about why you may not get stuff done. Anybody have anything to add about that? <laughs> I'm speechless. No. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say this is good, good information. And, you know, Maria is not by herself and how, you know, she's feeling and all of that. And I just want to say from what I'm seeing, she's doing a great, great job from what I be, you know, that's how I knew what she did because I but I'm like a newbie to her page. And then I was able to see, oh, I didn't know, I didn't even know you did that. And, and so it was something that I do and, and that I would desire, you know? So I think the whole thing is getting more people, getting around more people, like you're saying, um, Karen, and um, Facebook is just one tool and one avenue. I mean, it's not, there's so many other platforms too that we just can't settle for just one thing and think it's going to work. That's it. Um, and so that's something that we need to find out. Hey, how you doing? Hey. <laughs> I just can't, you know, this just, this just says you just keep on keeping on and keeping on. And I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get shown in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fabulous. But that's why I wanted to talk about the lies in our head, because Maria, you are feeling like you're not you're not getting what you need done. But a lot of times you are doing what you need to do. But when you prioritize it, then you will feel more accomplished because the important stuff got done. Maybe not all of the things you needed for the the process of what People say, Facebook, you got to do this, this, and this, and this. But you have to prioritize what will get you closer to the goal. If you got to go to the doctor's good health is a goal, right? Yes. So you have to go to the doctor. That was a priority today. Okay. You're not going to the doctor's tomorrow, so it's not a priority tomorrow, right? Right. You give yourself some grace. There is no perfect to anybody's to-do list. There is no perfect way to do anything. It's all in you giving yourself grace and doing what you can. Because I, I can't believe after all these years, all the programming that you've had from when you were a child is like, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. I mean. It's a mess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. It is a mess. And it's just like- And it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Maria, I'm sorry. No, it's like peeling this one layer at a time. And when we're gonna get down into the solid meat of the onion? <laughs> Stinks. Well, I, I will tell you, and, and this comes from 60 some, almost 65 years of programming. 
that when I got really, really tired of fighting the programming, I went to a mentor that did subconscious work where I, I went through hypnotherapy. I went and, and we cleaned and healed those because sometimes you can't physically do it enough yourself. And it was the best money I ever spent because now I don't feel like I'm hitting my head against the wall. I feel like I'm more of a whole person since I did that. She helped heal parts of me from, I, I had a very, very traumatic and I, I had had a very troubled childhood. And so there were a lot of things that I, programming wise, I felt very unloved for most of my life. And when you, when you don't feel, when you don't value yourself, you marry people who don't value you. You, you teach friends not to value you. So when you finally decide and learn to undo all of that and require that you are valuable and that you don't let people devalue you, it changes the whole energy around who you have in your life. But if anybody's interested in deep work, I have a fabulous girl because I went and got deep work. I, you know, after 60 years and I've been reading books and I've been doing the positivity and I've made great, great, great strides in leveling myself and building huge businesses. But there comes a point sometimes when you're not happy, you don't feel that you are the person that you are, that you need to be, that you can be. So I went and got help. <laughs> Guys. Tamika, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that, you know, we don't have to, because sometimes we think that we have to do it this way. This is the way that we've been taught. This is the way, you know, and we try, because even myself wanted to try to do everything this one, one way. And then you find out that you could do the same thing and do it a lot easier. But for whatever reason, the way I've always done it, I wanted to keep that same way. I remember one time I was working and it was a parking lot where they built a parking garage um, to the job that we could walk across the bridge to get into the to the area. Well, because I had been parking in the parking lot for all these years, I didn't want to change. And so one day I said, you know what? It's raining outside. I'm going to go park in this parking deck. And I was like, oh, my goodness, it's so convenient. They even have an umbrella. I can walk in the building. I can go and I stopped parking where I used to park because this is convenient. I can park in the parking garage, in the parking deck and walk across the bridge. They even have umbrellas and I can get there quicker. Didn't but my mind <laughs> was like... I've been doing it this way and it works and hey, I don't want to change, right. but I learned that I could do the same thing, get the same place and it was so much easier. So changing the way we think and, and saying that, and then I used to always want to be perfect too. I want to, I, I like to do things right. That's, I just want it to be this way and I don't want to make a mistake. But I have learned that that has been holding me, that held me back for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say, look, I'm going to just do it. I'm going to do it. And I'm, I'm going to perfect as I go. I'm going to make improvements as I go along the way, because at least at least I'm doing something. So I just want to say, you know, you. For, for me, prayer is what is my thing. And, and like you said, I know you said that it helped you. You know, going in for me is just having that time and having that prayer and that worship and all of that. But it's OK to change. And, and I had to realize that. So this year I'm like, look, I want to try. I want to go to different restaurants. I want to try because I was afraid to try something different. Why? Because I didn't want to be disappointed. But mm. that too holding me back. It's OK mm. To try something different because I, I won't know if I like it or not if I don't try it. So that's just my little spiel. But 
just me being in business for a long time. So even though we haven't been doing it that way, we know what it takes. We just need to figure it out. You know, try, try it, try it out. So try something different. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> the, the habits we have, um, I heard a story and, and, and uh, I'll try to make this the last story because the, the thing is there, there is no perfect. And it's a bit, it's a heavy burden to Mika when you keep trying to be perfect. But there was, a, there oh, was yeah. this, a woman and her daughter came up to her one day. She was fixing a roast. And she goes, mom, why do you cut the roast? Why do you cut the sides off the roast that way? Is, it, is, it, is there things wrong with it? Are there things that I need to see about this roast that you keep I'm cutting wrong. it? And the mom looked at her and says, no, honey, nothing wrong with it. I just had to cut it down to make it fit the pot. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, because my mom always did it that way. <laughs> See, Debbie, I knew you were going there. That's where I was going. <laughs> well, the, but that, that, that was probably part of the story, too. But the thing is, is it still originated that the mom cut it to fit the pot. It wasn't anything wrong with the roast. She had to cut it to fit the pot. Why don't we just get a bit of bigger pot, guys? Nothing Hello. wrong with the roast. Yep. If the baby, if you didn't keep trying to walk, would you be walking today? Do you tell a baby, no, no, you haven't done it perfect. Oh my God, you're not walking perfect. People, it's a heavy burden when you try to do it perfect. And when you let go of that, it gives you all kinds of freedom. Um, I was listening to, um, I think it was, I, I, I've been doing a lot of Earl Nightingale on YouTube when I've been walking. And he was talking about perfectionists. And one of the things that he said, one of the coaches or trainers on perfectionists made them fall down. Because what happens when you fall down? You think everybody's laughing at you. Made them fall down over and over and over and over again until they got comfortable with, with just falling down. Just fall down. Get used to falling down. Because once you get used to it and you find out, oh, I'm not going to die. I haven't died because I fell down. <laughs> it frees your spirit. It frees your energy. Because none of us is, there is no perfect. There's no perfect schedule. There's no perfect anything. That's why we have the virtual chat to talk about people's different ideas. And it is about just deciding one thing, Maria, just for your business, decide every day one thing that will move your business forward. Okay. Because when you can do something that moves your business forward, then you know eventually you do one little thing. You keep adding those little things that move your business forward. Guess what? At, at some point, then you have a big thing. You've done put all those little things in and then they st start stacking up and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And before you know it, all of a sudden you go, wow, all of a sudden, I mean, I'm making my quotas. I'm doing this. Look at, oh my God. Because you didn't focus. On, oh my God, I'm not making my quota. Oh my God, nobody's bought anything this week. Oh my God. Put out there where you want to go, what you want to have, what you, you focus on that and you do one thing every day that's going to move your business. And you have to decide what that one thing is. But since as far as my thinking is, people is what moves our business forward. We have to meet people. We have to talk to people. We have to get to know people. So to me, connecting with people, one a day, two a day, however many I can connect with, that's that's how you, it, it, it will all, all do. Has, any, has, everybody re, has everybody listened to all of the Napoleon Hill selling you in, in the group? No. Okay, Where? I have it there. I left it there. It was the very first book that when I started this group, it was about books because books can teach you if you, you know, can teach you a lot of stuff. It's in the guides. I have, I have three, three books in the guides that are phenomenal about helping you move your business. In the Summit Seekers? Yeah. Okay. 
I would suggest if you if you are serious about moving your business, go listen to the, the book, Napoleon Hill's Selling You. I have all of his chapters there. It's, even though it's a video, it's an audible book because I do a lot of audible and it just listen to it. You can play it while you're driving. You don't have to watch it. You can just listen to it. You will learn a lot about how to, how he's, he was the master salesman trainer. Napoleon Hill was. He wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich. Anybody re wrote, read Think and Grow Rich? Okay. It's a big story with that one, but we'll go. It's, it's at 1230. So, but I left the, the three books in there that will really help you are Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, Napoleon Hill Selling You, and Magnetic Marketing. I have three phenomenal books in there to help you move your business. I was just consulting with my husband on a movie and I couldn't remember what it was. I couldn't remember why that guy kept saying, I know what this one thing is. It was in City Slickers. Do you remember that? Okay. Now I must have seen that 20 times, but that didn't even, even uh, come off the page or slap me in the face until just now, but I couldn't remember what the name of the movie was because he said, I know what that one thing is. Once you know what that one thing is, then the rest should be easy. Yep. That's it. I love City yeah. Slippers. That was a cool movie. <laughs> yes, it was. I can watch that over and over. Okay. All right, guys. It's been wonderful. Karen, this, was this has been superb. helpful. And, you know, if, if you missed the beginning of it, you know, I, I suggest go back and watch the beginning. But if not, uh, y'all have a great week. I'll see you in the chats. Love y'all. Thank you so much, Karen. Bye, Deb. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.